Today, I'm going to show you how to paint this guitar. Today, I'm going to show you how to get this guitar prepped and ready for final finish. This guitar has had four rounds of our Simtex sealer put on it, and the last time we sanded it back, we sanded everything with 320 grit. Um, so now it's ready to get masked and we'll take it into the spray booth and spray it. The first thing I like to do on these is double check them one last time and make sure that everything looks good. Uh, sometimes when you're sanding you just kind of want to be done and you might miss a couple of things. So we're going to take another look at it and make sure that everything is just right because it has to be just right or you'll see all of those flaws in your final finish. Oh, before, before we get too far, I'm going to show you all the stuff that we're going to use today. Uh, we may need some super glue or this stuff from Glue Boost called Fill and Finish, which is really cool. Uh, it's just a little bit, it's, it's more like uh, paint, less like super glue. Super glue is really hard. This stuff's a little softer, so it sands a little easier. It's more like the uh, Simtex sealer, but it's a lot faster drying. I've also got some uh, accelerator for both of those. You're going to want to have some sort of grease remover, whether it's uh, rubbing alcohol in water, which we use occasionally, or something like this that we get from Tamco. This is, they call it uh, Final Wipe and Anti-Static Cleaner. Uh, I think it's probably just naphtha. We've got paper towels. I've got a little bit of sandpaper and a gray scotch bright. This is 320. I've got a little block just in case. And then I've got a bunch of different tapes and sizes. We're going to use this fine line blue tape. It's vinyl. Uh, I may use this tape as well. It's a, it's a paper tape. Uh, this stuff stretches so it works really well around edges. This stuff doesn't stretch so it works really well in straight lines. And this is just plain old blue painter's tape. So let's take a look at this guitar. Um, the top looks good and the back looks good. Uh, then I'll check the sides. Oh, I have to uh, prepare this for the electro socket that we put in. Forgot all about that. Why did you wait until now to do that? Uh, that's a good question, viewer. Uh, the reason that we wait until now is if you do it before you put sealer on it, you fill the hole with sealer and the, and the, the jack fits so snugly that uh, you don't really want to have to chase it. If we did that and painted it, I'd have to chase it and I, I would run the risk of chipping it. If I do it now, uh, the new paint will soak in a little bit, seal up the edge, but it won't change the size and I shouldn't have to chase it. The electro socket should just drop right in. So we'll do that right before we uh, get too much further. Uh, Everything looks, on this one it actually looks really, really good. I don't see anything. Um, I did see a spot earlier in the top that I'm going to hit with a little bit more sandpaper. Uh, I don't even think you'd be able to see it if I tried to show it to you. It's just a real, real little, little spot. Apparently people like these really long videos that I think this is going to be. So... Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it being boring. I'm just going to do it. So something else I looked, I, I saw on this guitar as I was looking it over before we started videoing is it's got a little bit of a sand through right there on the top of the headstock. Uh, and rather than go back and fill it or put more sealer on it, which would further delay this guitar, I'm going to fix this with some super glue real quick. And the way you do that, a little bit of super glue. Make sure the super glue works. Yep. A little bit of super glue on there. And then I'm going to kind of rub it in a little bit. Time. It's also a good time to glue yourself to your project, which I like to do at least once. And then I'm going to hit it with this accelerator. And that should be that. So I got my step bit. Um, the, 
the electro socket is 7 eighths here, which is the hole size that we drill, and we have to go to an inch for the outside, but I just want it to sit a little bit recessed. I don't want to go too deep. That's my little tester. So even our uh, 7 eighths hole got a little bit of stuff in it. And I've found this is easier to do, believe it or not, with a hand drill than it is to, to try and chuck it up in, in a drill press or something like that. I have just a little bit better control of it. It works even better if you set the drill to drill and not screw. But anyway, here we go. It's nice and flush, and I'm going to go and blow it off and uh, get ready for masking. So I blew it off, but I want to wipe it down with some degreaser because I've been touching it with my presumably greasy hands, not 100% grease free. And I want to do that before I start masking because I want the tape to stick. So we're going to wipe it down with a little bit of naphtha or cleaner. I don't know that this is naphtha. I said that earlier, but I was just making stuff up. So I like to have two paper towels. Uh, one that's got the stuff on it, and then one that's dry, and I'll just do it in stages. I'll wipe. That off, and then I'll dry it. Because what'll happen is that naphtha will pick up all the, uh, that cleaner will pick up all the dust and then you just start spreading it around and it'll dry and you'll have this haze of, of dust. And, you know, you're trying to get dust off it as much as you're trying to get grease off it. And we'll wipe it down one last time before we paint because we'll be touching it as we mask. So this is a guitar that's uh, pre-sold to a guy, Mike Durbin. Hope it's okay to say his name. Uh, and he's requested the finish that we call the Hammer Burst, which is kind of our standard Challenger standard finish. It's that uh, dark blood red edge with an amber middle. And it almost looks like a three-tone sunburst but it's really just got two colors in it. It's just the way that you shoot it. Okay, so we're completely degreased. Now it's time to do some masking. The first thing that I like to mask is the fingerboard. And that's the only tape that's gonna stay on this guitar from now until when the final, final clear is sprayed. Uh, I'm gonna use this tape. So I actually also put on my glasses. And so what I'm trying to do is just mask it to the edge of the fingerboard. And I, I try and mask it tight, but no matter how tight you mask the frets off, you could, you could get in there with like a, a tool and really work it. Sealer still, or paint, sealer, pretty much anything you spray on it is still going to get it onto the ends and into the ends. So I just get it close. When you're doing the fret work after the paint, you're gonna scrape all of the excess paint off of there and, and redo the fret ends and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, just get it, you know, fairly tight. I prefer to do it this way rather than, especially at this point, rather than overlap and use my knife to trim it because sometimes you can end up with little, little bits of tape that overhang and I'd rather have to scrape off excess paint than try and fill a spot where, uh, where paint didn't get on the neck, if that makes any sense. On these, I 
overlap it down the down to the nut area on the fingerboard. There's no reason to paint the end of the fingerboard. You just have to sand or file that off when you go to put the nut on. And then on the back of these, I've got a really cool little trick I'll show you here in a second. So I just fold that over. And I do it again on the other side. Hey, keep it down. We're making movies over here. And this is the only reason that I stopped chewing my fingernails. It was just so I could do this. And the reason that I do this tape first is, like I said, it's going to be the only one that stays on the guitar all the way through the finished process. We'll add more tape, we'll overlap it onto this tape, but this tape will be there until tomorrow when we pull it out of the spray booth. The rest of them will have to peel off at some point. Okay, here we go. These knives are really cool. It's got a flat edge here, and I want to just trim the, the bottom edge off, but I don't want to necessarily trim it to the body. So you can use this, it elevates it just enough. You now it does it like that. Pretty slick, huh? All right, so the next trip, the next step is we're gonna mask the, uh, the side of the neck. This guitar, as you can see, has a little bit of a brown fretboard reveal all the way down. So I'm gonna mask it uh, utilizing that line rather than the maple binding. I'm also gonna put my glasses on. Okay. And this tape doesn't cover up the entirety of the fingerboard, so I'm going to go around another time. No, oh, it doesn't. No, oh, it can. Now it's time to mask off the maple binding on the body. But it's not really binding. It's the wood that's on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask it off, and then when we shoot the color, this will end up looking like maple binding, but in reality, it's just part of the maple. It's a really cool trick, and I think it looks, I think it looks even cooler than binding, and binding's about the coolest thing you can do to a guitar. Who, who's credited for inventing that? Uh, the first place I saw it was a PRS. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't know if anybody else did that kind of thing, probably somebody at some point, but PRS does it on everything. We'll get the comment section, we'll go in here. Probably, yeah. Uh, so I usually start on the hardest part first uh, because I like to do the whole thing in one piece of tape. Every time you overlap tape, you run the risk of paint getting underneath it, then you got to scrape it, and then you could make a mistake scraping and all of that. So I usually start here with an extra piece, do a little bit, and then come back. Uh, the secret to this is be willing to pull the tape off and do it again if you have to. Um, what I'm going to do is, this is about a quarter of an inch, which is what our tape is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask up just a little bit, like a sixteenth, and overlap the top so that we have a nice even edge all the way around. And then I'll come back and I'll remask to the, to the quarter inch. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope so. I don't know how much anybody's going to be able to see. So I've got a bunch of extra here that'll go all the way around that. And I'll do a little and then I'll show you and then we'll probably speed it up and, and get to the other stuff. So can you see there? I want it to look like that all the way around. That amount of tape on the top. And you can see on the side how much reveal I've got right now, okay? And this tape stretches, but you don't really want to stretch it unless you have to to make it do something like around the horn here. Um, because when you stretch it, it likes to unstick itself. Tight spots are always the hardest, without a doubt. Okay, so come around, gotta push it down really good on the horn.
probably, even when it's all said and done, there will probably be some, a little bit of scraping that you have to do to make it look perfect. But, anyway. All right. This is one of those things I think, don't be afraid to try it and peel it off. It doesn't take that long to do. And if you're not 100% sure or 100% happy with the way it's looking, I would say peel it off and start again. Because now is the time. With each step of, of this, it gets harder and harder to fix it until eventually it's almost impossible to fix. So, now's the time to get it perfect. So, somebody's going to say, you're supposed to scrape that. That's what the guys at Gibson do. Um, for one thing, the paint that Gibson uses, the colors, it's more like a shellac. I've actually seen the cans, and I think they actually say shellac on them, which is almost a powdery substance. And that's what they use for the the bursts and stuff like that. I know for a fact, because I've looked at Gibson's and I know what a masked guitar versus what a scraped guitar looks like, all their colors are masked. They don't scrape those guitars. You're talking about like the Pelham Blue. The Pelham Blue and Black and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, they only scrape the bursts. Yeah, they only scrape the bursts and yeah, I just, I think I get a better result doing this. I know I get a better result doing this. Um, if you've ever looked at a Gibson and you see that, that little like shadow halo around the binding, you know, where, where the body is, the mahogany is red and the maple is sort of this weird pink color, I would, I would think that those were even just poorly masked. Let me install our hook. This is so we can put it on our paint rig and rotate it and have something to hold on to after it gets a coat of paint because we don't just put one in at a time. Well, we put one in at a time, but we don't just paint one guitar. So the hook is on it and I'm going to wipe it down one more time and then we'll take it in the paint booth and start to paint. I'm ready, are you ready? I was born ready, Matt. Here we are in the paint booth mixing area and I've mixed up uh, a little bit of Intercoat Clear, which is basically clear base coat. Uh, and it's used for blending colors. Uh, you can use it to uh, carry metal flake if you're spraying metal flake. And in this case, I'm going to add a little, I'm going to split this up, add a little bit of amber dye to part of it and make up some of the blood red that we use for the burst. So it takes very, very little to do amber, so I'm not going to mix up very much of that. And that one's easy to mix because it's just straight amber dye that we get from sumac or from uh, Color Tone Direct. Transtint. It's this good stuff. Transtint is the place. So this is amber. And it always takes more than you think it's going to take. I don't measure it out or anything like that. I just mix it up until it looks about right on the stick. That looks pretty good. Okay, so there's that one. And this one we're going to make into our blood red color and that we use um, cherry red, a little brown, and a little black. And we could probably do this on a scale and come up with a formula, but what's the fun of that? The reason that we do it this way, uh, instead of by putting translucent colors onto the top of sealed wood is you get a little bit more consistent results doing it this way. There's no, um, no what do they call those spots? <laughs> that was impressive. <clears throat> what do they call those? 
blotches. There's no blotchiness. There's no, uh, it's just a little bit more even look than smearing a bunch of dye or stain or something like that on your wood. Uh, it, it's, it, yeah, it just, I think it looks better and I think you guys will agree it looks better when we're done. Right, you ready? All right, we're going. So I usually start with a real narrow pattern and do the narrowest stuff that I'm going to do first and then gradually get bigger as I go for the body and stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is the neck. And I'm going to do the dark part first and the amber part second because I think it, it gives it a little softer look and I like the way it looks. Also, I can control how much amber is on there or, or know the right amount of amber uh, compared to the uh, burst part.
amber. So just okay. Rip. Okay, so it's been about an hour since we sprayed our sunburst on it. Have to let that dry for an hour, and now I'm going to unmask all the binding. And I've been told to keep my hands out of the shot. I will try. This is like Christmas morning. Guitar edition. Only you already know you're getting a guitar. Yeah, so but it's, it's really not like this this morning cool at all. Cool to see the binding. It of, is. Like, really yeah. Well. You always want to pull the tape back on itself. And I always go fairly slow. If you go fast, sometimes the paint will pull off in big chunks. Can you see that? How does it look? Looks pretty good to me. It looks like cool maple binding. Yep. Okay. But this is the showstopper coming up now. So there's two layers of tape. I'm probably going to peel them off one at a time. First one's that bottom edge that we did.
All right, and then I like to double check it, make sure that I don't have to scrape anything. I usually do have to scrape something there. I can see I got a little scraping to do there, and I have a little scraping to do there, and a little scraping to do there, and then there. So I will scrape those, and I'll put the headstock logo on it, and then we'll take it in and do some clear. So Chris let me into the paint booth, and I want to show you the differences between urethane top coat and lacquer. So this is lacquer, and this is acrylic top coat. Now, can you can we see? Can we kind of zoom in here? So they're both just thick liquid. This apparently is magic, and this apparently is the devil. But the fact of the matter is, they're both plastic, you guys. Even though this says lacquer on it and you think that it's magical mojo stuff, it's the same kind of stuff as this. Um, it's plastic that is in liquid form and it dries or hardens. But it's plastic, you can't breathe through it, and um, yeah, so there you go. Lacquer, urethane top coat, not a lot of difference. Sonically, they sound the same. So now it's time to spray some clear coat on it. I got my Randy Macho Man arm guards on. So, guaranteed, no, we're going to not have any issues. <laughs> kind of want to go, oh yeah, brother, we're going to spray some paint. I got, I got some, some, uh, some uh, 2K, for those of you that like that. Uh, I got some automotive uh, urethane ready to spray in our cup. Can't remember if I stirred it or not, so I'm going to shake it. And I'm going to use our Iwata IPH 400 gun. We only spray clear with this gun. And we use these disposable cups because it's easier to mix and it's got a filter built in and they're pretty cool. All right. So the first coat we're going to do is a guide coat um, or a tack coat, I guess is actually what they call it. Uh, and that's just to that's for the next coat to stick to. If I tried to put too heavy of a coat on, first coat, it could just run right off. So the first one we're going to do is a guide coat, which is just a light coat, and then we'll do three good coats after that.
Okay guys, so as you can see, it is the next day and the guitar that Chris just painted looks like a million bucks. In fact, it is so sexy, you better get the birth control. Um, so we showed you how we do our standard Texas Toast Burst on our standard Texas Toast Challenger and like I said, this one is super, super cool. Um, we've been using the same paints and things for, uh, for many, many years. We, uh, we love Simtex Sealer, we love Tamco Paint and, uh, um, and of course Trans Tint uh, aniline dyes are the bomb and we use those for just about everything. So um, uh, there's lots of ways that you can uh, achieve uh, a cool finish on your guitar. This is just one of the ways. So, uh, and this is what we do and we have no intention of changing because I think the results speak for themselves. So uh, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, give us the thumbs up and if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, why don't you hit the subscribe button now? If you appreciate content like this, you can uh, go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member, or you can also do the same thing on YouTube. You can join our YouTube channel, or Utreon, or whatever, whatever that is, and uh, you can become a member at YouTube too. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us uh, bring you guys neat stuff like this. If you can't do it though, we totally get it. Just like the video, share the video, uh, and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that life is short. You might as well have a cool guitar. Thanks for watching you guys, we'll see you next time.